Are you looking for how to learn and master some of the basic Camtasia editing environment features? If so, then this new series of videos I'm doing will be of great help to you for building your editing foundational skills. In this video, we're going to tinker with the canvas features like edit and crop modes, zooming, panning, and more. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Today's video is about focusing on the canvas and the work area that the canvas is in. This is very important so that you can get a feel of how to manipulate the canvas in your whole experience of editing. And I thought before we dive into, in other videos, more details about editing on the, and using the timeline features and a lot of the shortcuts and some of the other features in the scrubbing in detail, that it's important to get an appreciation of how to work with the canvas to help you have a great experience. So first off, I have on the canvas, you can see that there's this little dividing line where I got the split arrow where I placed my cursor, that if I move it up and down, you see that the canvas scales up and down automatically. And that's an important feature to acknowledge, and it's called the fit. So as soon as I go into the canvas and I were to try to scale it, which I can do by using the scroll mouse wheel. So if I click here inside the canvas area and I scroll down, mouse, uh, scroll down, scroll up. You can see I can scale to many different levels and you see the number here changing in the top wherever I'm at. So they're down to 35, down to 10 and all the way up and beyond. But as you can see, as soon as I've gone into that mode, if I move up and down, you don't see the canvas area resizing with what I'm working on. If you click back to fit, it automatically puts things back to that full, full size sort of fit inside the canvas at work area automatically. So it's something to be mindful of that as soon as you click inside here and change it, you're automatically out of that fit alignment, which will automatically scale with you when you go. And I think that's an important little feature to know. Very useful. Now, also, um, the scaling can also be done by using the control plus and minus keys. So again, in context, if I do control plus, I scale up, control minus, I scale down. And if I want to get back to the full fill inside the canvas work area, I just click on the fit there. Okay, now a few other features here inside the canvas. And I wanted you to see that we have the ability to do crop, which using the hold and alt key, we can use as a shortcut or click here. We have the pan, which is to hold the space bar and then the, the normal edit mode. So in normal edit mode, which is what we are by default, because you can see this is in green here. If I come and grab the corner, I'm always getting this proportional scaling of whatever I'm doing to the asset. But if I, or the clip, if I click on the crop mode, you see the frame turned blue and see if I go back out, it goes white and then back to blue. And if I turn to blue, it's gonna crop what we have here. And this has many useful um, benefits when we're dealing with our editing. And just one simple example would be if I pulled this asset on screen, but uh, as an example, I only wanted part of it because I'm in the crop mode now, I can just trim that and let's say I only wanted to have from that point up. And then if I click here and I go into the edit mode, I can now scale and then of course move the asset around. So that's just something to be familiar with, knowing when to use the crop and uh, the normal edit mode. And of course, if I go back to the crop mode, I can always pull the uh, to the handle and drag it down and get back to the full size of whatever the image was in this case. I'm gonna delete that. You can also toggle the crop mode on by pressing the Alt key. So watch, if I press the Alt key, see press and off, press and off. It's like a temporary hold. As long as I hold down the Alt key, that works. So if I brought my asset back on here and you see I'm scaling, right, by using this in edit mode. But if I wanted to do that crop up, I could just temporarily press the Alt key, grab the handle, let go. You see now I'm back into the normal mode. So that's quite useful because oftentimes you want to bounce between those two modes. And again, just Alt puts you there. Okay, I'm going to delete that. Then there's the pan feature, which is here with the hand. 
So I clicked it on pan, which allows me to move around the canvas, uh, move the, the sort of like the, the, the center section of the canvas that's in our um, widescreen area in our 16 nine by nine, but I can scale it. So let's say I wanted to go and focus in here. I could move it by, by using the pan and then I'm going to scale by using the scroll bar as we showed earlier and you see you can move around. So this allows you to go in detailed and explore around. And again, if I ever wanted to scale back, I just go to click fit and it puts, puts everything back inside the window. Now you can also do this pan uh, movement by just clicking on the space bar. So if I go back to my normal edit mode, if I press and hold the space bar, I have the pan and I can move it around. And then as soon as I let go of the space bar, you can see I go back to edit mode. So that's quite a, quite a useful feature to use in the process of uh, editing. Now, another interesting aspect to use inside the canvas is the ability to detach the canvas. And this is very useful, especially when you want to look more closely. I use the maximize window, little icon here, the square. And when I do that, now you can see I have the full screen. I can now view my my, what I, I, I can now view my video in, in almost full screen. I'm not in full screen. I'm just in maximized window, but with this, I have the ability to, if you can see now down below that the round ball, the uh, scrub head is, is moving around. I can move from clip to clip by pressing the right and left arrows. Okay. And also with the mouse over, you see there's a shortcut control alt period. And for previous media control alt comma. So this is very useful as well to scan through your content. And then if you want it to go frame by frame, you can use these arrows over here on the bottom left. So next frame is, or press the period key. So if I press down and hold, you can see it's going slow frame by frame. And you can see the little tiny scrub head down here, moving a little bit at a time. I can go backwards and I'm, I'm doing that by holding the, uh, the left arrow button here on the side. So this is quite useful again, when you're doing and dealing with the nuances of things, but it's more helpful when you're, you're working in, with the timeline visible here. We now have the, the timeline visible below the, uh, the scrub, the scrubbing area and the play in the left and right arrows. And you can see here with the playhead just below, if I click the, the right arrow, I jump from clip to clip to clip. You see this happening down below and the back arrow. And likewise, if I was using frame feature, I can go I can go next frame or uh, previous frame. And if I click on here, the next frame, you see it just going through and you see the frame numbers racing up in the counter. And if I go back, we'll go back. You can see in reverse. Okay. So I'm just showing you here that with the timeline component visible and you're out of that detached and expanded view, and you're back into this one with the full work area and the timeline, you can see the actual activity and where you're moving about on the, the uh, timeline because the playhead is moving in conjunction. We just went to a full, full view here, meaning a maximized window view. But if I wanted to go to full screen and in the bottom right here, I can just click on this uh, sort of square thing with the four corners. And now I'm in full screen mode. So to press, to get um, the video to play, I just press the space bar. So see here, it says pulsating, but what, so now you can see we're playing, but I've lost the other controls, but now I have full screen. So it's, it's, it's a compromise and you need to decide what kind of uh, functional ability you want. Now, if I press the escape button, I now have my detached window still here. And then if I went back to full screen mode, uh, sorry, not full screen mode, the expanded or maximized window, I got the scrub bars back. But if I close now the six uh, expanded window setup, I'm automatically popped right back in the canvas is reattached and popped back in to the framework of the whole editing environment. Well, there you have it. A little look into working with the canvas in your Camtasia editing environment. In another video in this series, I'll be taking a look into timeline navigation and lots of editing basics. Question of the day. Let me know 
If you'd like for me to do more Camtasia basic level videos like this one to help you build your foundational skills with Camtasia, or perhaps you want me to cover other topics, please let me know in the comment section below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out some of the additional Camtasia tutorials to help you on your editing journey. And I'll see you in another video soon.